Sound design is a really critical element, I think, in any sort of movie that deals with creating a dark, scary tone. You know? and a lot of the sort of elements in the, the the sounds of the sounds of darkness, or you know, or baby screams and slowed down baby wails and backwards seal barks and all sorts of <laughs> fun, fun kind of uh, noises that. You know, that just felt very incongruous. That was always the idea, was find noises that didn't feel like they fit. I to ask you all uh, about what attracted you to the script, and also it's a very different kind of, it's a very intense performance because you're dealing with a threat that isn't really physical. And I mean, for a young actor like yourself, how did Brad give you direction on dealing with something which you really couldn't see? Well, it was pretty easy. Um, I've always felt about trusting Brad because with a film like this you can imagine this kind of situation, imagine it. It, it could go as far as, and it's very hard to really understand what a person would do in this situation. It was really a study of madness for me. And um, I mean, I, it's in, unimaginable to be a woman in that situation and losing a child of humanity. So it was about trusting Brad really, that was the bottom line for me. Um, and allowing him to kind of dial us up or dial us down. And it worked. Oh, God, it's amazing. That's the first time I've seen it. But it's fun. <laughs>
know, you guys are really good at using your imagination. I guess a lot of actors now have to do that though with the green screens and stuff. Use your imagination. But that was also impressive that the, that the effect almost used on a lot of visual effects to create that darkness, darkness is actually kind of the reverse of how most horror films now use CGI for that physical threat. You kind of stripped it back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that we, we wanted the shadows, the darkness, if you will, to be very organic and not. Uh, occasionally, you see these figures in them, and you, know, you can interpret that as you will, whether these are the figures or shadow versions of these characters, or whether they're sort of loved ones trying to pull them into the other side or whatever. But we always kept uh, we wanted the shadows, the movement of the shadows, to have an organic quality. We used a lot of we looked at a lot of uh, odd uh, quick. Uh, Images of movies of slime molds. Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen fast motion quick uh, move of slime molds, the way they kind of move across the surface, or uh, uh, the way that water uh, or an ink blot will kind of move on a piece of paper. To try to create this sort of sense of organic movement in the shadow effects so that it felt somehow real. Like the idea was like, whatever the heck is happening. We wanted it to feel somewhat in the world of plausibility. Um, and you know, the question of what is happening and what has actually uh, taken place is, of course, you know, that always deflect that question back to the audience. Because to me, the thing that's interesting is let the audience sort of, uh, let the viewer kind of come up with their own interpretation. You know, whether this is a sort of religious apocalypse, is this the rapture, is this the second coming, or is this, as John so eloquently says, is this you know, a physics experiment going wrong? Is it like a now attack run on monk? I mean, what the hell is happening? You know, so each character is sort of looking for his own, his or her own explanation. Sort of Hayden's character plays this guy, more of a man of action, you know, like my job is just to sort of get us out of this predicament. Of course, Tandy's character is looking for some kind of, you know, uh, uh, religious or spiritual so it's interesting, and I thought that was what, again, about the script that interested me was all those, how the characters each essentially confronted their own mortality and what that, and how they would do that. Well, so we don't have much time, I'm just doing two questions from the audience here. Okay. During the bar scenes, um, what I noticed was that when there was particular moments of uh, despair, anger, dark emotions, Well, I think that the idea was that, you know, almost like the, the darkness begins to become more tumultuous, like, based on their fear of it, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, obviously there's this notion in the story, it's not, a, it's not a hard and fast rule, but there's this notion that, like, you know, light is a protective force and darkness is a, a, a sort of life-pulling force. And, um, you know, we went with the, the idea that uh, when these characters, uh, you know, the, the idea was to sort of build the, the story in such a way that it just gets progressively more, the darkness gets progressively more scary and, and more aggressive, you know what I mean? So by the end of it, it's like attacking in a way. But, um, but yes, it's a, I guess you could say that, you know, their emotional state maybe is even kind of reflected in the, 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 the darkness. But yeah, we, we, we played with that idea, yeah. Yeah, the question was uh, in the in the beginning. John Leguizamo's character, projectionist, is looking through a book on like kind of mis word mysteries of the world, and one of them is matter versus antimatter, and the other is uh, this whole notion, this whole story about the, the lost colony of Rona. Uh, dark matter, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Not a physicist. I know the difference. Dark matter, right? The mystery of dark matter. What is it? It comprises eighty percent of the universe, or something. Well, we had a, there, were, there were all sorts of, we, we threw in lots of other things into the pot, like explanations like that. The idea was to toss out explanations, and uh, because, you know, what would you do in a certain situation like that? You'd be reaching and, and striving to find some explanation for this madness, this inexplicable event. The more inexplicable it is, the more you're struggling to find an answer. 
And uh, yeah, Troy Towen could, you know, I mean, he sees that word at the end. I mean, it, you know, maybe that is, maybe that resonates. As, as John's character says in that one scene, it's like, you know, maybe that, maybe that's like, maybe Troy Towen is like, you know, the sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, your computer is crashing. Maybe the whole universe, maybe existence itself is, is crashing. I was like, my theory is that it's, that, the, that, that, that everything is, is some kind of like computer simulation and it's being shut down by some higher intelligence. This is my theory. And on that note, let's hear it from Brad Anderson. <laughs>